So hi, hello and welcome again, Microbe Hunter here and this microscope here, look at this one. <laughs> this is the Delphi X Observer Microscope from the company Euromax and uh, today in this video I'm going to have a very detailed look at this uh, microscope. It's a very good one and I would like to thank the company Euromax uh, for having made available a microscope to me so that I'm able to make uh, this review video. The Delphi X Observer here is, as you can see, a fairly large uh, device. Uh, it is, um, yeah, I would say a research uh, grade microscope uh, but I'm quite sure that uh, many of you who are also involved in amateur and hobby microscopy are going to find this microscope very interesting because it does have some interesting features that you cannot find um, on other microscopes um, as well. So the Delphi X microscope does come in different versions. Uh, this model over here, for example, has an LED uh, light uh, and it's also available with Halligan. Here we have also planned objectives. Uh, all Delphi X microscopes are infinity corrected objectives, but here we've got a plan a semi apochromatic objectives. But for routine laboratory use, you can also get a plan A chromatic objectives and even uh, phase contrast objectives are available. Um, yeah, the website of the company provides uh, all of the different uh, variations. Yeah, but today um, I'm going to have a specific look at this one over here. Now I'm going to divide uh, this video into several parts. Uh, first of all, um, I'll be unboxing the microscope. Uh, then of course I have to assemble it and put it together. There's not a lot of assembly required, uh, but a little bit. Uh, then of course so we're going to have a more detailed look at the different features that the microscope has to offer. And then last but not least, of course, I will be putting a few specimen slides under the microscope. But as a matter of fact, uh, one of the slides you are, you are already able to see this here is a cross section of wood. So. I would say, let's unbox the microscope. The microscope was delivered in one large uh, box, uh, but this box uh, contained uh, several smaller boxes uh, because uh, the microscope is quite modular and uh, the different parts were packaged separately for, um, for protection. Um, of course, uh, I arranged everything uh, on my table. There was the body of the microscope. This is, of course, the largest part. Um, the eyepieces, these are wide field eyepieces uh, and uh, the stage also came packaged uh, separately. So everything is here now and assembly only took uh, a few minutes. Uh, but if you need to upgrade the microscope uh, or if you need to put it apart uh, for maintenance purposes, there are detailed instructions available which you can download. I first removed uh, the protective uh, plastic covers um, from the head and from the body and, and then I used the provided uh, tool to connect the head to the body. And much in the same way I also connected uh, the photo tube. I also dropped the eyepieces into place and then last but not least I also had uh, to connect the stage. The stage uh, slid into place and only had to be tightened and fixed with a small screw right in the front. Um, I generally like it uh, when uh, microscopes are that modular because it makes of course maintenance much easier and uh, the microscopes can also be upgraded uh, much more easily this way. So um, after about three or four minutes um, of, uh, of assembly, uh, I was able to put the microscope into operation um, and uh, we're now going to have a look um, at some of the features or as a matter of fact, at all of the features the microscope has to offer. So let's uh, talk about uh, some standard features first. Those features that can be found on, I would say, uh, pretty much any microscope these days. Um, I would like uh, to mention them just uh, for the sake uh, of completion. Of course, uh, the Delphi X observer microscope has a coarse and a fine focus knob. Pretty much every microscope uh, these days must have those. The tension of the coarse focus knob can also be adjusted. There is a tension adjustment ring that you can turn. It is also possible to adjust the fine focus knobs uh, depending on whether you're right or left handed. It's possible to detach uh, the handle for the fine focus knob because it is connected over a strong magnet and therefore reversing it is easily possible. There is of course also a diopter adjustment uh, on each eyepiece uh, possible and uh, the distance between the eyepieces uh, can also be adjusted. Of course, there is also a light intensity control. Yeah, and I have to say that the brightness of uh, the microscope's lamp is, is quite, uh, quite high as well. The knobs uh, for controlling the mechanical stage are also quite large and uh, very nice. Uh, you are even able to adjust the tension um, of the mechanical stage. You can do that by pulling down um, on the knobs and then you're able to rotate them and to adjust uh, the tension. 
but I would say what is really more important is, is let's look at its features that uh, makes this microscope stand out and different uh, from other microscopes. Now already when I unpacked uh, the microscope I already realized that the microscope is, is fairly large um, and also heavy and that's an important feature uh, because uh, the size and the weight uh, provided, provide a very stable image especially when you do photography or videography work. There is less vibrations for example when you walk across the room um, or so then there is simply because of the mass of the microscope the image is much more stable. I think that's a very important uh, reason to have large microscopes and the second one is this what we call ergonomics, um, especially if you sit behind the microscope for, very, for a very long time, it's simply more comfortable um, to sit behind a large microscope for a longer time than behind um, a smaller one. Yeah, so that is uh, the first uh, important uh, feature as well. You can install uh, six objectives uh, on the nose piece um, of the microscope. It comes pre-installed with a four times, a 10 times, a 20 times, a 40 times, and a hundred times oil immersion objective and there is still one space left uh, for an additional objective. I would of course uh, always connect a 60 times objective um, here and uh, then you're covered uh, for all magnifications. In my case here this microscope has um, apochromatic objectives but uh, the company also provides uh, different objectives. You for example face contrast um, if you want to. The eyepieces um, are also quite large. Uh, they have a field number of 25. Um, this is significantly larger than the standard um, eyepiece field number of 18. Um, this means that you're able to see a much larger um, amount or area of the specimen when you look uh, through the microscope and this gives you much more, um, a much more immersive impression. Um, and this is also important for ergonomics again uh, because uh, when you're able to see more of the specimen it's also much easier for you to find your way around as you explore the different uh, parts um, of the specimen. I already mentioned that each eyepiece has a separate diopter adjustment and this is of course important uh, to even out any differences in eyesight that you might have. The provided uh, condenser is a so-called a swing-out condenser and better microscopes have those swing-out condensers and uh, this means that uh, by flipping over a lever you're able to remove uh, or to swing out the top lens of the condenser and this is important especially if you want to get a large field of view with a four times uh, um, objective. Um, yeah, so you can swing it in and out quite easily this way to ensure that uh, you always uh, see the maximum um, amount of the specimen. And the photo tube also can be focused. There is a ring here that uh, can be rotated and this raises and lowers the camera so to uh, be able to make sure that the focus of the image is the same as the focus uh, in the eyepieces. The condenser can of course also be raised and lowered and uh, it is possible to use the provided tool to center the condenser. This is again important uh, for curler illumination which is uh, the next thing that I would like to talk about. The microscope has a so-called a field diaphragm. Uh, the field diaphragm is able to restrict the light uh, only to the area of the specimen uh, which you're actually looking at and this prevents overheating of the specimen and the uh, curl illumination also ensures that you have a very even illumination and uh, you also therefore have less stray light and this makes it very suitable um, especially if you do photography and or videography work. The Köhler diaphragm can be adjusted by uh, turning a small wheel on the right side uh, in the base uh, of the microscope. On the left side and next uh, to the coarser uh, focus knob uh, you have the so-called focus lock and uh, this focus lock allows you to adjust the highest position of the stage. It's uh, very nice uh, to have this feature as well especially if you do oil immersion photography because it allows you for a very quick way to exchange the slides. So you basically focus everything using uh, oil immersion then you um, engage the focus lock and then you're able to lower the slide um, and the stage uh, and you're able to exchange it and it is not necessary to go through the complete focusing process again. The microscope will turn itself off um, if you are not using it uh, for a certain amount of time. As a matter of fact if you're leaving the microscope uh, af uh, after a certain time it will switch itself off because there is a small sensor in the front that's called the eye care sensor and you can engage it or disengage it. You can switch this feature on and off as you need it um, but uh, if you leave the microscope uh, then um, after some time it will automatically switch itself off. 
However, there's also a second way how you can switch uh, the microscope off. And that is there is next to the light intensity control, there is a small button. And this button is there to switch between top light and bottom light. Now this microscope version over here does not have any top light, um, but the switch can still be used. Uh, and then in this case, it switches off uh, uh, the main light lamp. And this is a very quick way of uh, quickly switching it off and you don't have to reach back um, in, in the back of the microscope uh, for the main switch. There's also a built-in diffusion filter that you can engage. Uh, there is um, on the back left side of the microscope also a small little uh, button that you can press, a small little lever that you can engage and this will slide the diffusion filter in, into the light beam and will ensure yet a more even illumination. Especially uh, nice uh, if you want to do photography work. As you can see, the microscope does come with a photo tube and a trinocular head. And on the right side um, of the microscope's head, there is the so-called the light path selector with three possible settings. And you can uh, change the path of the light by pulling in and pulling out a little lever. You can either uh, redirect all of the light to the camera um, and then it's going to be black when you look uh, through the eyepieces or you can um, redirect all of the light through the eyepieces. So this will give you a very bright image and uh, then no light will reach the camera. Or you can have an intermediate setting where light you know, both reaches the eyepieces and the camera. So the light, in other words, is uh, split into two parts uh, and this allows you to take pictures um, and to observe them at the same time. Now, even when you are redirecting part of the light to the camera, then the lamp is still so extremely bright that you will have enough uh, light uh, present even for the higher magnifications. And that is um, actually also one of the things that I would like to mention is, is that this is possible because the lamp itself is not located directly in the base of the microscope, but rather on the back side. And then it is uh, redirected forward and then using a, an optical system, the light is redirected uh, upwards here. And this basically means that uh, by having the lamp in the back of the microscope, uh, this uh, allows you to have a more powerful light and also a better cooling system. As a matter of fact, uh, most larger um, and more advanced microscopes do not have a, an LED or halogen built in in the base, but rather uh, separately in, in the back. But you need the light intensity because this microscope allows you to do something that many other microscopes do not allow you to do. It can be upgraded to DIC, so Differential Interference Contrast Microscopy. And for this reason, there is a little uh, yeah, screw here that you can loosen and there is a DIC slider here. And this, uh, yeah, right now it's not the prism, but uh, you are able to replace this with a so-called DIC prism. Um, and then you can get a DIC uh, microscopy. And DIC microscopy um, provides uh, a three, uh, something that looks like a three-dimensional image um, of your object. And it looks very colorful and it's very impressive. And uh, this microscope um, is... Uh, yeah, equipped uh, with all of the um, yeah, parts uh, that allow you to upgrade it uh, um, to DIC as well. So now it's finally time to put a few uh, specimens under the microscope. You can already see the first one here. This is a tardigrade, uh, yeah, which I found in one of my moss samples. It's also known as a water bear or a moss piglet. And uh, I'm also going to show you a couple of other permanent slides uh, of ready-made uh, commercial permanent slides because they also look extremely beautiful. Now I did already mention that this uh, particular microscope model comes equipped with uh, plan semi-apochromatic objectives. Uh, this ensures that the image is uh, crisp and uh, sharp all the way into the corners and uh, the semi-apochromatic uh, objectives also ensure that the color reproduction is of very high quality because chromatic aberrations are kept uh, to a minimum. And both of these factors are of course very important if you're interested in doing a lot of photography work with the microscope. Because there is one more place left uh, in the revolving nose piece for an additional um, objective, um, I always recommend that you get yourself a 60 times objective. Um, it is uh, of a quite high magnification, but it does not require you to use uh, oil immersion. The company, of course, also has a DSLR adapter in its program. And this way, you are able to connect a single lens reflex camera. And this, of course, gives you a yet better image quality. 
Now, if you um, want to get a little bit more information, then I recommend that you visit uh, the Euromax Academy. This is a website uh, which allows you to download uh, the various uh, pamphlets uh, and also instruction manuals, user manuals, and there are also instructional videos uh, that you can watch. And for those people who are living in North America, there is a North American partner. Uh, the company name is called Globe Scientific. I did include a link also in the description below. And uh, from this website, you're also able to obtain additional information. Well, I think uh, for today, this is uh, again uh, enough. It was a slightly more uh, detailed and a slightly longer video. But uh, for right now, this is it. Uh, I hope uh, that uh, the, the video was informative uh, for you and I wish you all the best and happy micro hunting as always. And uh, see you around next time. Bye bye.